Welcome back to my series of videos about using Roll20 to run 5th edition D&D and today we're going to look at character creation for your player characters. Uh, as the GM you could do all this process yourself but I think most players, certainly on a long form game, are going to want to be involved in creating their character uh, if they're going to be playing for a length of time. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, we're going to create a character uh, but it's going to be a, a bit of back and forth between the GM role and the player role. Uh, first things first, I'm assuming the game has been set up and the players have connected to it. Uh, so let, let's put that to one side and just worry about the actual character themselves. Firstly, I'm wearing my GM hat and I am going to create a blank character for one of my players. So I'm going to create a character uh, and I am going to give it a name so that Rob knows that it's going to be his. Rob character, there we go, and I'm going to put this character into Rob's journal and that it can be edited by him. Uh, spoilers, me. Uh, if I want to put tags on there I can do that as well but I'm not going to bother now. Click save on that and now that character exists and if I close the window down I'm now going to switch to uh, being a player. So here I am in player mode, and if I go to my player's journal, uh, you will see uh, that I don't have very much uh, on my journal here at all. Oh, I've got Steve Stevens as a character I did for my last video, uh, but Rob character is sat there waiting for me. Uh, if I click on Rob character, that will take me into the character sheet. If I click on the character sheet, uh, and make that window a little bit bigger so I can see it, uh, it is possible to edit the sheet directly and manually create the character, filling all the boxes in yourself. I, I'm sure a lot of people love doing that. I'm not a fan of it, so I'm going to use the nice handy wizard that's going to take me through the process of creating a first level character called the Character Mancer. Click on Use the Character Mancer. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to think about before I touch any of the options here is think about the character concept that I want. Uh, and I am going to create um, a pirate cleric. He's a guy who serves aboard ship with a pirate crew and looks after their faith uh, and because they're you know, superstitious sorts. They, they want to pray to the gods of the sea, the gods of luck maybe, uh, and that's really what I want to be about. So, um, and I'm going to create my character as uh, human, I think. So, there we go. We're going to create a character as human, so clicked on next, take us to race, and I'm going to choose human from the list. Uh, and as you can see, it's telling me about humans over here, uh, and specific game effect stuff is over here on the left-hand side. Now, one thing to be careful of with the character mancer is that we have um, sort of multiple scroll bars, which can get a bit confusing. Uh, in this uh, information uh, section. Uh, we've got a scroll bar here which will let me scroll up and down to read more about humans but also I have a scroll bar for the window as a whole which will let me take me back up and have a look at my attributes and the different elements of the character or down to look at any choices I might still have. Uh, so my alignment is a choice. I think chaotic good Pirates can't really be lawful. I mean, they could be lawful, but it, it doesn't feel right for me. But I think he's he's he's, he's a good-hearted soul. And the language I'm going to choose, I'm just going to choose Goblin, because it's a classic. Uh, and notice, playing a human, I can choose either to play a standard player handbook, handbook human, who will get um, plus one in all of their attributes. Just the top. There we go. Or if I wanted a feat, I could choose the variant human, at which point I would use, need to choose which two stats I want to get my ability increase in. And then later when feats are chosen, I would have an option of choosing a feat. I'm just going to go with a standard human. Now, generally speaking, I would click next to go to the next phase, which takes me to class. Uh, I am quite a fan of doing my background before my class and this is partly from a, uh, a character point of view because you know I, I want to be able to feel my character, I want to be able to know who they are before I get into the mechanics of what class they are. 
But also from a mechanical point of view, uh, choosing a background does give me a proficiency in some skills and proficiency in some tools. And if there is an overlap between my background and my character class, uh, I want to make sure I choose my background first to save juggling back and forth between them. So background next. I'm going to choose my background and I'm going to choose the pirate background, which is going to give me proficiency in athletics and perception and navigators tools and water vehicles. Actually, I don't think that's going to work with cleric at all, but there we go. Those are my choices. Uh, and uh, then I can either click and choose my personality traits or I have my rollable tables. Uh, I think I'm just going to choose them here. Uh, if I was playing this character for real, I would agonize about these for some time. I'm just going to choose the top option and the second option. The t I'm not even reading them. The top, I feel, I feel kind of dirty. Uh, it's just, um, just choosing the simplest options there. So I've got all those selected. Uh, obviously, I would spend more time on that if I was creating this character really to play it. So popping back to class then, I'm going to choose my cleric. And again, two scroll bars, one in there to read about clerics, uh, one on the outside edge to scroll back and forth in the actual main window. Uh, skill proficiencies, uh, religion, so that seems like a good choice. And uh, I feel I'm the sort of, the sort of cleric who tells uh, sea stories about old campaigns. So I think, I think history uh, is my other one uh, for this character. And uh, choosing the domain. Uh, notice, well, I haven't really talked about this, but I have, uh, as the GM, got access to the player's handbook and Xanathar's Guide to Everything. And I have sh shared my compendium with the players in this game. That means that they can choose options from the PHB or Xanathar's Guide, uh, and you can choose those options from here. And it will pop up a description of what they are on the right-hand side. I think... Um, do you know, I think I might go with, I was going to go with Trickery Domain, but I think perhaps a, a, a Tempest Cleric would be quite nice on the, on the open seas. Yeah, I'm going to go with a Tempest Cleric. So Tempest Cleric uh, has um, gods like Taos and Ombali and Qu actually not very Celtic good, but never mind. Uh, and uh, Domain Spells, Fog Cloud and Thunder Wave and proficiencies and all the rest of it. Uh, so having any more to choose, no, that looks to be it. So I can move on to my abilities. I can uh, use the standard array, I can roll for stats, or I can use point by. Uh, hilarious though rolling for stats is, <laughs> quite tempted. Well, but I'm just going to use point by today. So there we go, point by. And I am going to do my utmost to remember. I've already got plus one in all my stats. So what I'm looking for, if I'm going to min-max this just a little bit between you and me, uh, I probably want to focus on getting odd numbers uh, when I'm choosing uh, numbers down here. So I'm going to put my wisdom to 15 because I am a cleric. And the plus one I've got from being human, make sure that becomes a 16. Um, I don't want to fall off boats, so I'm going to have at least uh, a 12 dexterity. I say 11 plus 1 for being human is 12. Uh, but uh, as a cloak, I'm quite hitty thing, so let's put the. Uh, mm, I want to be able to strength. Mm, maybe. Uh, intelligence, I'm quite happy to stick with 10. Charisma and constitution left. Uh, I feel again I should be I should be a storyteller so I should be telling people charismatically stories about history and pirates and religion and Umberly or whoever uh, and also uh, because uh, I don't want to be seasick all the time uh, let's have my constitution be at least uh, 11 uh, and uh, you can see I've got one available point left um, everything should now be at even numbers so whatever I choose really it's just going to um, just be flavor at this point. Uh, I feel the whole falling off a boat thing was quite important to me so maybe in the future I might want my dexterity to be higher so that is the one I'm going to increase in this case. So that's a pretty nice spread of character stats for my pirate cleric. 
Uh, next, well, we've done the background, so we'll go next again uh, to take us into equipment. And again, I have options here. I can either uh, generate my starting wealth, uh, search through the compendium and find my 50 foot of rope and drag it onto my character sheet and do all of that manually. But life is frankly too short, particularly in a video like this. So I'm just going to do my class equipment as a standard. And that means I can choose my mace. Uh, I can choose my... I'm going to choose leather armor. I know scale armor is better, but I feel as a pirate I don't want heavy metal armor. Uh, but I do feel the need for a crossbow, so let's choose that option there. And I'm going to choose the priest's pack. That feels right for me. So that's my equipment done. Next. Uh, I'm choosing my spells. And I've got three cantrips that I can choose. And I've got um, some uh, four first level cleric ones, plus my two domain spells already selected for me. So Tempest Cleric, I'm going to go with... Uh, oh, what's Word of Radiance? Uh, oh, that's quite nice. Okay, we'll, we'll have a bit of that. Uh, and then we will... Um, I don't know, perhaps every time I want to use my navigation tool I might want a bit of guidance, so let's go with guidance on there. Uh, but I, I feel I should have something zappy as well, so f sacred flame. Nice. Uh, and then for my first level spells, we're going to go standard here, bless, cure wounds, um, guiding bolt, and shield of faith. Oh, actually, do you know what? Purify food and drink. We've been on the if we've been on the boat for too long and we've been becalmed. I maybe I want to make sure the food is edible. So there we go. That's a nice array of spells for me. So I'm going to click on next. Uh, no feats to choose from here because I didn't choose the variant human. Uh, and then I've got my bio. I can fill in as much as I like here. The one thing I really should make a point of filling in is my character's name. Uh, and uh, dread, can't spell, cleric, can't type. This is going all sorts of well. <laughs> uh, so there we go. And I, again, I would fill in other details if I was doing this character for real. Click on next. And if anything here was in red, it would mean I'd skipped a step or I'd missed the thing that I was supposed to choose. I haven't, so everything's in black there. So I can just click on apply changes and that will build my character. And there we go, we can see my character sheet all done for me. Uh, so um, my sort of standard attack stuff is in the middle here. I've got my proficiency over there on the left. Saving throws and skills, uh, AC, initiative, and all of my class features over here. And my spells are in my spell option. And I've got, I haven't used any spells yet, so I have two uh, slots remaining for my first level spells as a cleric. Uh, and that's the player side of things done. There's a, a few last twiddles that I need to do as the GM, uh, but my player probably wants to tell me a little bit about what their character looks like, because as the GM, I'm going to be assigning uh, a, a, a token to that character, like they did with Thomas here. So I'm now going to switch back to GM mode and do the finishing touches. So here I am back in GM mode and I can see that uh, my player has created Dread Cleric Roberts and I've had a talk about them about what they want to look like. So I am going to find a token uh, that uh, matches or as closely matches as I can from there. Uh, obviously I'm not going to do a tutorial here about choosing your own pictures but that's an option as well. Uh, I have uh, in my own library, created um, icons for um, was a character that, that uh, a player of mine was playing in another game, created a, a, an icon there. So it's entirely possible. I'm just going to use one of the standard ones uh, which are available uh, from the player's handbook. And let's look at the humans as a starting point. Uh, maybe I can look at the fighters. Oh, I quite like it. Oh, actually, I quite like him. Oh yeah, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use him. I know he's a, I know he's a cleric, 
But that looks quite a looks quite a, 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 a gnarly old sea dune, doesn't he? So I'm going to drag that onto my uh, tabletop. Uh, there we go. And now I am going to, as the GM, this is all GM stuff, don't worry about this if you're a player, but the GM needs to assign this token to represent uh, the character we've created, Dread Cleric Roberts. There we go. Uh, we're going to show the nameplate, and that may be a little bit long. So let's just go with Roberts on that. Uh, as the GM, I'm going to change... Let me just save changes on that. You'll see that there's three circles appear above the head when I select a token of a character. Uh, red, green, blue. And they can contain numbers for different types of things. So I'm going to say that the green circle is going to contain the hit points of this character. And that the blue circle is going to contain the armor class of this character. Uh, and then still in GM mode very much, I'm going to let other players see the name of the character and the hit point bar of the character. That's an optional thing. You might feel it's uh, uh, not quite as immersive uh, if you know what the other character's hit points are, but I, I think it just speeds things along a bit. Uh, and uh, I'm going to make sure this character can see things. So if I drop him on a battle map later on, he'll be able to see where he's going. If you had Infravision, I might want to adjust this of being able to emit light uh, so that he can see as well. But he's human, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to click on Save Changes. So there we can go. We can see that Roberts has currently got nine hit points. If I click on there, I can see he's got nine hit points and armor class of 14. The red dot I can use for whatever comes up. I may be tracking my arrows, uh, maybe tracking uh, my gold pieces if I felt that way inclined. Actually, that wouldn't be such a good choice because you probably have quite a lot of those eventually. Uh, but, you know, I, I can use that red for, for whatever I like. Uh, but I'm not quite done yet because I still need to assign the character to the token. So, open up that character sheet and edit it. And I am going to make sure that I'm going to use the selected token uh, for this character. That means that when I drag this character from the journal onto the battle map, it's always going to use the same token. And uh, I quite like to include the art as the avatar. So let's go back to the art. Which one was it? Uh, there we go. And I'm going to drag that into the avatar there and save the changes. And that means that in the journal, I can see don't point at him, uh, I can see which token uh, he's going to look like. So there we go. It's quite an involved process uh, in terms of the, the number of steps, but actually relative, all the steps are relatively straightforward, I think. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Cheers.